To see more detailed instructions on how to blood feed a colony, please refer to the blood feeding video. A cups can be placed in a cage two to three days after blood feeding. Place the filter paper inside of an eight ounce cup and add a label to the side. This will serve as an oviposition chamber to collect eggs. Fill the cup halfway with DI water and place it inside of the cage. Larvae are hatched three days after the placement of an A cup. You will need DI water and Anopheles larval food. Next, prepare the Anopheles food before adding it to the pan. To make Anopheles food, mix two parts ground tetramen flakes, one part yeast, and add some water to create a slurry. The consistency should be similar to a smoothie. If the slurry is too thick or too watery, it may disperse in the water. Use a pipette to add a dime-sized amount of food on the bottom of the pan. Be careful not to add too much food or to spread it around, as it could promote the growth of harmful bacteria. To remove the egg cup from the cage, first use a razor blade to cut an X into the lid of an 8 ounce egg cup. Cover the lid onto the egg cup and remove it from the colony cage. Use the stockinette to prevent mosquitoes from escaping. Use a pipette to transfer larvae from the egg cup into the pans. To prevent contamination, use a new pipette for each colony. Check on the larvae daily and add food as necessary. Some transgenic colonies may need to be screened for fluorescence. Larvae can be screened during the L3 or L4 stages. Wet a lined filter paper and place it inside the funnel. Pour a larva onto the filter paper and use a vacuum pump to remove the excess water. Be careful not to vacuum it for too long, as this may harm the larva. Add a couple drops of water to the petri dish to prevent the larva from drying out. Place the filter paper on a petri dish and screen for fluorescence. Remove any negative larva using forceps. When screening is finished, the larva can be returned to the pan with fresh water and food.
Once the larvae begin to pupate, pick the pupa using a cut pipette. If any pans have more than 50% pupa, they can be strained using a more efficient way to separate larva and pupa. Be careful not to strain too many pans at once, as this may harm the larva. Clean the strainer with soap and hot water. Wipe the strainer with a paper towel to prevent cross-contamination between colonies. Pour the larva and pupa through the strainer with another pan on the bottom to catch any larva that may have passed through. The pan can then be refilled with DI water. Make sure to double check that the water has no small larva that passed through the strainer before disposing of it. Use a bottle of DI water to transfer larva and pupa from the strainer into a cup. Swirl the water around to separate the larva from the pupa. The larva will congregate at the bottom of the cup, making it easier to pipette them out. Return the larva to the pan and pick out any remaining pupa. The pupa can now be placed into a new colony cage. To see more detailed instructions on how to make a colony cage, please refer to the 83 ounce cage construction video. Use four lines of tape to secure the plastic lid to the bottom of the cage. Adhere a colony sticker on the rim and label the cage with the date. This makes it easier to determine the strain of the mosquitoes and how old they are. Place the cup of pupa into the colony cage and fasten the stockinette. Place a damp cotton ball with a 0.3 molar sugar water solution on top of the cage and cover the cotton ball with a cup to prevent it from drying out. If any virgin wild type females are needed for outcrossing, separate the mosquitoes as pupa. Pour a small amount of pupa onto a glass petri dish and remove any excess water using a pipette.
Use a paintbrush to separate pupa into the male and female sections. When done separating, pipette the pupa into male and female cups. For females, pipette around 10 pupa into each cup. And for males, pipette 20 to 30 pupa. Cover each cup with a lid and netting. Pour in half an inch of DI water. Place a damp cotton ball with a 0.3 molar sugar water solution on top and cover the cotton ball with a cup to prevent it from drying out. Add a label with the date on the tray. The water can be poured off after two days when all the mosquitoes have emerged. Some transgenic colonies can only be maintained by continually outcrossing them with wild type mosquitoes. For outcrossing, use virgin females that are around 5 days old. Before adding the females to the colony cage, check the cups to make sure that all the mosquitoes are females and remove any cups contaminated with males. First, use a razor blade to cut the netting on top of each cup. Use an aspirator to transfer the female mosquitoes from the cups into the colony cage. A colony cage with 50 transgenic males can be outcrossed with 100 to 150 wild type females.